This is the Hyundai Alcazar facelift. Nobody is meant to keep up. I've been working. I'm keeping my energy up. Think of it as a Hyundai Creta Max. I keep going. We open. Devotions. She hopeless. And it costs about a lakh and a half more than the Creta. So let's get straight to the point. Does this Alcazar now have enough mal to justify the extra price? We on the new way. Now, if you do like things bigger in life, bigger and better and stronger, a lakh and a half isn't too much money because some men pay a lot more money to make things that they like a little bit bigger. So what do you get extra? It's more than just an extra set of rows and some more metal and more glass. The Creta's dash is carried forward here, but if you go back to the Creta review, that grey interior looked a little boring to me. This looks a lot more premium. So should we say about fifty thousand more of an upgrade? Now, if you watched our videos long enough, you'll know that the two features inside a car that I absolutely cannot live without are Apple CarPlay and ventilated seats. Now, of course, this gets both, but it also gets ventilated seats at the rear with a little button right there, and that's not even the best part of these captain seats. That would be these absolutely freaking amazing rear headrests. Am I getting old or am I just maturing? But once in a while, sitting in the back seat of a car, being chauffeured driven around, especially if the seats are like these, in my opinion, the best seats out of the Innova isn't such a bad thing. And why do I say it's the best seats out of the Innova? Because you get under thigh support, which is adjustable. You of course get these heavenly headrests, and if you are uh, in need of more space, you can actually take the front seat forward, front passenger seat forward with these buttons. And then you've got really a lot more space. You know, sitting in the back seat in a car like this isn't such a bad thing. The only negative I can think of, though, is when you do have someone sitting in the front seats too. The leg space isn't as much, especially if you are a tall person. So let's quickly recap: 50k for better materials. I'd say about 10,000 bucks for the better headrest. About 25,000 bucks for the ventilated seats, and we are nearly there. Already making up that difference to the Creta, and that is when you bring up Sanskar, because one day your family and your extended family will all turn up at your house at the exact same time, and you will be expected to take them out for a little drive in your new car. And that exact second, when you are driving them around. And you are the apple of their eye. When you realize that that extra one and a half lakh rupees that you spent on your car, as compared to getting a Creta, is worth every single brownie point that you are getting at that moment. Until then, of course, those rear seats will probably never get used, and even if they get used, you'll probably have kids in the back there, or that unfortunate nanny that has to sort of squeeze into the back with the little child's sort of bags. Which means that I don't have to get into the back to show you how much space it doesn't really have. And trust me, do you really want to see me struggle to get back there on a large screen in your house in 4K? No. We have said it in the past, and we will say it again and again. The Alcazar is a better four or five seater. Then a fully fledged six or seven. If you are someone who likes a good set of tires to make your drive experience even better, we recommend the Apollo Aptera Cross tires that offer great handling and braking while further enhancing mileage and durability. Isn't it interesting? We are almost halfway through, or more than halfway through, our review on the Bar Drift YouTube channel, a place where we are genuine petrol heads. We're car people, and we haven't talked about engines, about horsepower, about torque, about performance. And that's because the person who actually is watching this video and considering buying one probably wants to know more about. There's the ADAS working. Probably wants to know more about fuel economy than driving ability. 
people who buy this will probably tell their friends how their diesel is giving them a figure that will always be higher than the ARAI figure and it probably will. I mean these things can easily do about a thousand kilometers on a single tank if you are gentle with the throttle making them the perfect road trip car. That said I do want to make something very very clear. Both engines are great. The petrol really gets a move on too and the diesel while on paper might look underpowered I can guarantee you it is good enough for this car. The other problem is that only 10% of the people who actually buy this will ever venture on a cross country road trip. Most will just take it from one traffic jam to another. Down at the bottom still looking back up. Which is why comfort levels are paramount. Which we already know it has. Now even with this set of 18 inch wheels on it. A set of wheels that I actually kind of like. And that's strange because Hyundai normally messes their wheels up. In this case they haven't. Great set of wheels. Uh, so even with these wheels on uh, it doesn't really have a bounce to it. It doesn't really shake people up. It's actually rather comfortable. Definitely in the front and even in the middle row and even in the back, the third row. Now, it's no Innova in terms of ride quality, but it doesn't leave you wanting for a lot more. And that is because if you really want to be all cool and show off your driving prowess to your friends and family, both groups that will hate you for it, by the way, fair warning given, it actually drives pretty nice too. If you want to be a cool dad or a cool mom or a cool person in general who thinks this is too much of a family car and you are a bit of a petrol head or you are somebody who likes their cars then buy it in that shade of mad grey. Although I suspect the internet will like you more if you buy it in this shade. Green on tan. Green on tan of course being Instagram's favourite car spec for the last few years and a trend that seems to be continuing. Oh, who are we kidding? Everybody's gonna buy a white one in any case. And so we've come to the point in the video where we're gonna talk about how this looks and you guys are all gonna go completely crazy in the comment section. I can just imagine the comments. Ye badi exterb bana diye un log ne. Same as the exterb. Yeah, there's a whole reasoning behind it. Okay, let me explain with the help of the iPhone analogy. Um, the Extra was the first one to come to India with that new design language, the first petrol powered one to come to India with the new design language and that is the iPhone 16. The venue is the iPhone 16 plus although I know the venue doesn't look the same as the Extra but for this let's use it as that okay. The Creta is the iPhone 16 Pro, it's got little bits of uh, sort of differences, little more premium looking and this is the iPhone 16 Pro Max. Of course it is bigger and it's better. Bigger and better and stronger and I kind of dig it but then I am personally a fan of these boxier 80s and 90s inspired throwback design language bits that every manufacturer seems to be doing these days now everybody said the pre-facelift Alcazar looked a little bit too curvy at the back and compared to the Creta it was completely different in terms of design language the fronts were similar the rear was completely different this time it's not too curvy, it's actually become more square and they've I think fixed the design issue because that one looked a little bit older, a little bit outdated. This now looks contemporary and modern and if I were to really nitpick, I think the little bit of a silver treatment on the bumper is a little too bulky but otherwise, I mean the connected tail lights look good, the tail lamps in general look good and there's a little nice touch with the Alcazar logo sort of hidden behind this pane of plastic. Nitpicking done then, moving on to something that I genuinely do not like. This is the part that you guys really like, right? the brutally honest part. So I'm going to say it again because I already said it in the first look. This silver panel is a complete afterthought because this could have easily been gloss black and it would have looked much nicer. These vents, these sort of fake, I don't know what if this even is. It just irks me. It's not, it's not cohesive as a design bit and it could have been much better. And then the other one that's just completely non-cohesive are these risers on the roof rack. Roof rack, fine. You want to have one? Okay, why these risers? I mean, it's just so badly designed. The fronts are even worse than the rear. They don't even line up properly and they just stick out like a sore thumb. Every time you see an Alcazar, you're going to look at this and you're going to remember what I've just said. 
I would be curious to see if these add-on risers can be done away with altogether in some way. In fact, I think that could very well make the car look a lot better. So there you have it. The Alcazar has always been a great package and although it hasn't done the kind of sales that a Creta does, 80,000 units in 3 years isn't exactly bad either. I mean, it's more than a few automakers all put together. The updates though have made it better, much better. It looks better, feels more premium on the inside and is a genuinely great and more reliable option to some of its um, larger contemporaries. But what I want to end with is a suggestion. Hyundai, if you are watching this, and I know you guys do, how about an Alcazar that doesn't have the rear row altogether and the captain seats moved further back? A four-seater Alcazar, a super, super premium Alcazar. I can tell you for a fact that there will be people who will want something like this. Okay, so that's the video done with and this is the part that you guys all love, the unscripted part. So a couple of things that I want to actually notice, uh, I want to tell you guys that I've noticed. Um, the logo, uh, as with most new Hyundai's, uh, is a little too large now but, and also it's not chrome because there's no chrome on the car but maybe like a black chrome to match would have looked nice because silver on this just a little jarring but you can't even take it off because it's sort of inset into the bumper. Um, Apart from that, the one big thing, the one big problem, of course, that we have to talk about, again, is this. I mean, we talked about the rear in the video, mouth here, sort of, dramatically, but this, I mean, look, it doesn't even align properly. It's, and like this little, like, patch is like more on this side, less on this side, and it's just like, who designed this? It's just, it's just horrid. I don't know. Okay, uh, there's one thing I do want to talk about, the rear headrest that we sort of have made such a big UN cry about, they are genuinely, without a single lie, a word of lie, they're genuinely great. Now, what I've done is I've removed them from the rear and I have uh, put them in the front seat because I've also removed the one on the front. So, why should the people in the back seat get all the fun? Because I normally drive my cars, right? I'm not a passenger in the back seat. Very, very rarely am I a passenger in my own cars in the back. So, I wanted to actually see if you can swap these out and if you can, how comfortable they would be. And I don't know if they'll fit. Oh. It does fit. It fits like a glove. We'll put this at the back for now. I'm gonna get in and see how comfy. Ooh, this is comfy. You know what this feels like? This feels like an old race seat, like a old Ricaro or Sparco seat with like lovely sort of head support or neck support on both sides. I would definitely do this swap if I bought an Alcazar from the rear to the front. At least one headrest. And while we're at it, if you do have an Alcazar or a Creta. I'm going to read this out to you, okay? Quickly, let's take this shot. Right, see that? That's the part number. Uh, 89700-BVDA0SIT. That's the part number of this awesome new headrest. So if you're going to get one, get one for your car and put it in. But don't remember, don't drive without a headrest, okay? That's like, no. So anyways, I'm not going to try and put this. That's the video for you. Um, probably going to put these on other cars as well if you can find them brand new from a Hyundai service center they're very very good uh, yeah that's the video for you uh, tell me what you think of the car in the comment section below tell me what you think of this unscripted section I know this is weird normally people don't do this but we do sort of tinker with our cars we do finger around with our cars so this is a good hack to have your nice comfy headdress in the front as well so right tell me what you think in the comment section below tell me if you like the way this looks don't like the way this looks tell me what you thought of the video in general and again be kind of like the mm, I'm just kidding. Guys, see you in the comment section. Bye-bye.